In this video, something very special indeed. It's a Fiat 131 Mia Fiori. This is a Series 2 car, has something very special under the bonnet. But uh, regardless of that, this is such a rarity these days. These cars survive in tiny, tiny numbers. The uh, Anorex Monk you will have spotted that it has left-hand drive wipers. This is actually a right-hand drive car. It was imported from Italy at some point. It now lives in mid wales but uh i'm really looking forward to this this is uh, a car i have never driven so the uh history of the 131 is that it replaced the 124 the 124 is the car that became the polsky fiat so a fairly conventional layout rear wheel drive and that was carried over into the 131 but obviously with styling that's much more befitting a car from the 70s so it's all a riot of straight edges black trim it was introduced in 1974 and in 78 they released the series two of what which this is one which had a few detail changes including uh revised rear lights the initial rear lights uh, looked slightly like a bit of an afterthought especially when it came to reverse lights but now everything is all included in one unit and uh, in uh, 1981 i think it was there was a further facelift that had longer rear lights the uh, series three and the 131 lived on in turkey as the um, tofus i think and uh, right through till the early 2000s uh, facelifted to try and make it look a bit like a regatta but uh yeah a very famous car when it comes to motorsport they're very popular in rallying but uh yeah it's nice to have this one in roadworthy trim although it's a bit road plus as you can probably tell by the big fat tires um, on these eight inch wheels. It's, um, it's a little bit sporty, but before we get to sporty, um, we'll just check out the boot space because your family motor in the seventies needed to be practical. And there's plenty of room in here for the old trusty backpack. And uh, I love this car. It's got such a high state of originality. It kind of looks like you've still got factory seam sealer in the uh, corners. It's really nice. It's not a perfect car, but it is a car that just feels like it's a true survivor. So when it was launched, it was a very conventional car, 1.3 or 1.6 uh, overhead valve engines. Series 2 came out in 1978. There were optional overhead cam engines to liven things up a bit. They were known as the Super Mia Fiori. But if we look under the bonnet of this one, this is more like a Super Duper because we've got a Lancia engine and it's built by Guycroft Engines and noted Fiat and Lancia tuner. It was actually built for a Stratos replica, but uh, I don't think that ever happened and it's ended up in this 131 instead. So uh, the owner had this engine already. The engine in this car when they bought it was blown up and dead. So they went, well, why don't we fit that engine? And yeah, indeed, why ever not? But you'll notice we've got twin, twin choke Delortos on it to, um, really make this thing sing the, the the induction roar is just incredible it doesn't feel ridiculously powerful i mean it's quite powerful for a 70s family saloon but the noise you're going to like it folks you're definitely going to like it by the way the name mira fiori that's the factory where this car was built it was opened by fiat in 1939 but then there was the unfortunate second world war uh, after that had been um, dealt with and the factory rebuilt. Uh, production started in 1947, initially the 1100 and the little Topolino. But the Fiat Nuovo 500 Cinquecento was also built there. And in fact, that continues through to the current day. The current electric Fiat 500 is built there as well. Climbing aboard, these seats are absolutely amazing. Look at them, we've got a headrest built into the uh, back of it and uh, separate rear headrests in the rear as well, even a center armrest, quite luxurious. The rear windows open as well. But uh, as much as people complain about the short leg, long arm driving position, I think this is actually pretty much spot on. The accelerator pedal works its way around the wheel arch intrusion. They got the dials straight ahead, the typical Fiat um, indicator stalks. So we've got an indicator stalk there. That's your main beam, dip beam switch, wipers right lots of incidental switches and this amazing stereo. Look at it. It's like fluorescent green. 
absolutely gorgeous. Uh, heat controls just here and this stubby little gear lever for the uh, five speed gearbox. But one of our favorite features of this car is the glove box, which you open thusly. So you've got a section there or you've got a section just there, whichever you prefer. And there's a little light in the middle for when it's dark. I've never seen a glove box quite like that in my life. Let's see how the rear compares. The seat both tilts and slides forward slightly to make getting in a little bit easier if we bring that back. Got some um, storage in the back of the seat there. Little ashtray armrests both sides. Quite luxurious. It um, yeah, feels quite a nice place to sit in here. We've even got gorgeous little courtesy lights, which are very, very nice. And uh, a bit more space than I perhaps expected. And down here, we've even got the build sheet for that Guy Croft tuned Lancia engine. Got Morelli CB ignition system, apparently. Cool. Right, let's awaken the beast. Definitely not the sort of soundtrack you expect from a 70s car. Oh. I'm guessing that must have quite a light flywheel on it. Before we go, we will do the wiper test. Obviously, the wipers have not been moved for right-hand drive, but uh, I some oh no. We seem to be lacking in the screen wash department. Oh well, there, there's your pattern. And uh, I think, oh, there is a triangle of doom, but it's on the passenger side, so I'm going to uh, allow it. But uh, not a bad wiper performance. And actually, I don't think it suffers too much being right-hand drive. And to be honest, a lot of cars in the 70s would have this wiper layout for right-hand drive. Morris Marina, Triumph Dolomite, Citroen GS. So uh, it's not that unusual and it works okay, I think. But uh, really, I think we need to be doing some blub blubs. Indicators. Very quiet little hazards. tick there on the hazards. Yeah, yeah. You can barely hear it above the induction roar. Oh. There is a bit of a rattle from the back of the car, but I think it's actually the um, head restraint. Get off the gravel first. And it feels like it is insanely fast. It, it isn't, it's got very low, very close gearing, I think. And uh, it's just that induction noise makes it sound like a full blown rally car. I think the uh, fat rear tires are just catching the arches a little. This is why we're getting a little scuff noise every now and then, but. It feels incredible. Uh, the steering, rack and pinion, plenty of um, feel to it. It feels really tight and nice. But this gear lever is just wonderful. I feel like I could be competing on a rally in this thing. It's amazing. for you. Fiat actually built a diesel version. I bet it doesn't sound quite as good as this. Uh, and with it they competed on the 1977 London to Sydney Marathon and finished 15th. Uh, rivaling cars such as the Citroen CX, Porsche 911s, um, a Range Rover and even the winning car which was a Mercedes 280e. So um, I think that's quite extraordinary to compete in such a harsh event in a diesel. I bet the drivers wish they got one of these. Oh. Yeah, it just feels really nimble and agile and with all this um, grip on the back it feels really well planted the rear suspension design i think it is a live axle but a very very well located one yeah. 
and uh, that has many benefits a live axle often a bit stronger as well so the fact this car hasn't got an insane amount of power is actually a benefit if we had more power we would not be able to use any of it on this road the sight lines just don't, don't allow it I didn't realise this car had this engine and this carburetor set up until we got here, so it's been a most pleasant surprise this morning. Howdy hi campers! It's amazing how good um, a set of Delorto's sound, just the way they suck the air in. Minimal filtration, so there's nothing to stop that lovely induction roar. You look at the exhaust, it's not a roarty exhaust, it's all induction. Yeah, it handles really, really well. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is just like doing a rally stage, trying to avoid the worst of the bumps. Induction roar is absolutely intoxicating. Wow. The suspension squeaks a little less so, maybe. Well, there we go, folks. I think that is a very compelling case for not getting a Ford Escort. There are other sporty saloons from the 70s that are just as much fun. That is a really entertaining package. And uh, I love the fact that it's still so comfortable inside. Lovely, deep velour upholstery. Absolutely amazing. So this car, an absolute credit to its owners. And uh, we are very appreciative of the fact they have let us drive this beautiful car today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can head to the Hubnut store if you want to buy lovely merchandise. I'm not wearing it today. I'm wearing a design by RJW Creative Designs instead. But uh, we sell nice stuff as well. And we shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Fiat.